Hello everyone! Today we will use our supreme Python skills to create beautiful images with nothing but math. So we will do a very fun and artistic exercise focusing on converting numbers into colors or numpy arrays into image files. Now if you're new to this channel, welcome to Python Simplified where I, Maria, share helpful programming tutorials with the world. And this one? is probably one of the coolest projects I ever covered, so let's not waste any time and let's just do it. And we will begin with the imports. So we will first import numpy as np, and in addition, we will also need an image library, just so we can convert our numpy arrays into image files. That's why we will also import cv2 as an opencv. But alternatively, we could have used Pillow or Matplotlib, so it's just a matter of personal preference. Now, first things first, let's create a blank image and let's store it as a PNG file. And before we can do so, we need to determine the width and the height of this image. And in my case, I will, I will set it to 800 pixels all the way around. Beautiful. Next, we will create a blank image or an empty array with np.zeros to which we will pass our height and our width as a tuple where height comes first. Now we can assign this expression to img. And if you're not sure how or why I've done this, please check out my ultimate guide to NumPy arrays first, where I explain NumPy in great, great detail. Beautiful. Now the last thing left to do is to convert this array into an image file. And to do so, we will type cv2 dot im write as an image write to which we will pass two arguments the first argument would be the name of the image so my image dot png and the next argument would be the array we'd like to convert so img now let's save everything and let's give it a run awesome and once we do so we have a brand new file popping in our file system so let me quickly download it to my computer uh, because I'm using a cloud IDE, that's the, the cloud version of Wayscript. Let's open this image, and beautiful! Here's our blank 800 pixels by 800 pixels image. Awesome! Now let's go ahead and fill it with some colors. Now the first image we will produce is called 50 Shades of Grey. And yes, <laughs> it's very, very literal. So for this, we will need two different parameters. The first one is location or the X coordinate of our color chunks, and we will initialize it at zero. The second parameter would be the shade or the intensity of white, where zero represents black and white is represented by 255. Now, if you're not sure why those numbers produce those colors, please check out my image into matrix tutorial where I discuss color theory in great detail. Awesome. Now, even though both of these parameters or variables are set to zero initially, we are actually going to increment them as we go. And for this, as you may guess, we will need a for loop. So for i in range 50, because we are looking for 50 different shades. And within the body of the for loop, the first thing we'll do is we will select a region of interest within the image. So we will type the name of the image, followed by a set of square brackets, where the first set of arguments represents the top and the bottom coordinates. And the next set of arguments represents the left and the right coordinates. Now, in our case, we would like to draw our color chunks from the very top to the very bottom of the image. That's why the top coordinate would be zero and the bottom coordinate would be height or 800. Now, the next set of arguments is a bit more tricky because it changes from shade to shade. So let's do the following. Let's start drawing our color chunks horizontally from the location of location up until the location of location plus width divided by 50. And that way, each of our color chunks is exactly 16 pixels wide, because 800 divided by 50 is 16. Now, one thing I should mention is if we are ever planning to resize this image, a better approach would be using the floor division operator instead of the regular division. Because the floor division, on top of just dividing, it also rounds down the results to the nearest integer. That's why we are avoiding fractions by using this uh, double slash floor division operator. So that's why it's a better approach. 
cool. Now, once we have selected this region of interest, we will then assign it to shade, which for now is just black. But again, we will keep incrementing it as we go. And that's actually the only thing we are left with. So <laughs> let's do it. So first we will increment the location. So location plus equals width floor division 50, where width is the maximum horizontal coordinate we can go for. And next we will then increment shade plus equals uh, 255, which is the maximum intensity of white we can go for floor division 50. Okay, easy peasy. And believe it or not, we are done. So let's save everything. Let's give it a quick run. Okay, let's download our new image. Let's open it. Beautiful. Here's our 50 shades of gray. Good job, guys. But wait a second. What if we're not interested in 50 shades? What if we'd like to see 25 of them? Well, let's just close this image and let's slightly revise our code. Okay, so we will create an additional parameter called n underscore shades, and we will assign it to 25. Then we will copy n shades, and we will replace every instance of 50 with n shades. Okay, so there you go, here, 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 and here. Beautiful. Let's save everything. Let's give it another run. Boom, we have reduced the number of shades to 25. Awesome. Now, the last thing I will show you in regards, you know, to this image is how to create a very, very smooth gradient. And some of you may already guess we will simply change 25 to 255. That's it. Let's save it. Beautiful. Look at this smooth, smooth gradient. Next, we will convert our grayscale image into a colorful RGB image. So let's make a quick duplicate of our Python file just so we don't lose any progress. And we will also rename it. So in my case, I'm going to call it RGB. That's pretty straightforward. Now, in order to start working with RGB colors, we will need to adjust our array of zeros in two different places, where the first adjustment is selecting an appropriate data type. That's why we will add the dtype argument and we will set it to np.uint8 as an unsigned integer with eight bits where unsigned is basically not negative. But of course, there is a much more detailed explanation there. And if you're curious, check out the pinned comment on the NumPy arrays tutorial. But wait, that's not all. Whenever we are working with RGB colors, we are no longer dealing with two dimensional images because on top of the height and the width, we are also dealing with three color channels, one for the red, one for the green and one for the blue. Now let's go ahead and accommodate this new dimension we just added inside our region of interest. So on top of specifying the vertical coordinates and the horizontal coordinates, we will also need to focus on a color channel. So first, let's create a red gradient by focusing on the first channel at index zero, because RGB starts with R, which is red. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Now let's give it a save and let's give it a run. Let's have a look. And that's not red. <laughs> so what's going on here? Well, this has to do with OpenCV because instead of using the RGB format that the entire world is using, OpenCV decided to rebel and to use the BGR format, which is the exact opposite. So let's play the game of opposites. Instead of focusing on the first dimension at index zero, we will focus on the last dimension at index two, okay? Let's save it, let's run it. And finally, we are dealing with some red colors. So keep in mind that whenever we are working with OpenCV, we are dealing with BGR, not with RGB. And I almost forgot to mention is that we are not limited to selecting a single color channel. We can actually select a bunch of them. So let's select everything from channel zero up until channel two, not including channel two. Let's save it. Boom! Now we are dealing with shades of turquoise. Or alternatively, we could have selected everything from channel one up until whoop, up until channel three, which doesn't exist, but that's okay because we're not counting the last channel we specify here. Let's run this. And there you go. Now it's shades of yellow. Perfect. So now that we are comfortable with colorful NumPy images, let's do something a bit more creative. So let's draw a night scene of an office building with lights turning on in random windows. And also, if you're not a big fan of our BGR game of opposites, 
I will also show you how to avoid it. So let's make a quick copy of our RGB file. Let's rename it. And I'm just going to call it office building. Okay, now one way to avoid BGR format is to simply use pillow instead of OpenCV. That's why uh, from pill, as in pillow, we will import image with a capital I. Very important. And then whenever we are converting our array, we will use a completely different command. So we will use image dot from array to which we will pass our image array, of course. And we will add an additional method of save where we specify the name of this image. So my image PNG. That's it. Now let's test if it worked. Okay, so we were talking about RGB. So let's delete all our previous logic. We are dealing with a completely different image altogether, so it doesn't really matter. And we will select the entire image by specifying the name, IMG, opening a set of square brackets, and selecting all the rows with a colon. Then we can go ahead and assign a color to the entire image. So let's go for red once again. So 255 for the red channel, zero for the green, and zero for the blue. That's it. Now, if we save this file, boom, we are finally dealing with RGB colors. Awesome. So, you know, what makes sense to do right now is to change the name of RGB to BGR, just so we don't get confused. Okay. And now everything makes sense. Perfect. Now let's move on. Now, the first thing we'll do is we will set the background color to dark purple. In particular, a mixture of 35, 29, and 43. Hmm. And since we already took care of the skies, we might as well take care of the ground. So let's select a region of interest as usual. So image, we will then open a set of square brackets where the first two arguments are top and bottom and the last two arguments are left and right. Now, we would like to draw our ground at the bottom portion of the image. That's why we'll start drawing it at height times 0 0.85, which is precisely 15% away from the bottom. Okay? And since we are dealing with a non-whole number, let's also convert this expression to an integer, just in case, just to be on the safe side. Cool. Now, we'd like the ground to end at the very bottom of the image. That's why our bottom coordinate would be height. Beautiful. Next, we would like to draw the ground from one edge to another. That's why left turns into zero and right turns, ooh, right turns into width. That's it. Pretty straightforward. And now let's go ahead and select a color. So in my case, I'm going to go for a dark green. So let's do a very similar mixture to what we had earlier. So 35, let's go for, I guess, 55 on the green and let's go for 43 for the uh, blue once again. So we are producing a very similar color. It's just that this one is much more green than the previous. Okay, cool. Now, believe it or not, we are done with the skies and with the ground. So let's save everything and let's give a quick look. Beautiful. Here's our skies and here's our ground. Now let's move on with drawing the actual building. And once again, the region of interest comes first. So we will select our image and we will start drawing the building 10% away from the top edge and we will finish drawing it 10% away from the bottom edge. That's why we will start at height times 0 0.1 and we will finish at height times 0 0.9. Now let's quickly go ahead and convert these to integers because we don't want to deal with floating point numbers. Cool. Now, in terms of the horizontal coordinates, let's do the following. Let's just copy the exact same principles. So let's copy those commands and let's apply them on height, uh, on width instead of on height. So we will replace height with width in both. Woo! <laughs> Without those major typos. Okay. We will do this in both places. Beautiful. Now, once we have selected this region of interest, we will also need to apply a color to it. So in my case, I'm going to go for a medium grayish bluish color, uh, which is 94, 101, 107. Yep. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to look good. We will check if if there's something that we don't like, we can always adjust it. Okay, so let's run this code. Mm, yeah, that's not what I had in mind. <laughs> okay, so let's do the following. Let's, um, let's not work with a square image. But let's change the width. So instead of dealing with a width of 800, we will deal with a width of 600. Okay, this might do the trick. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, well, it's better. It's better, but it's not perfect. <laughs> I'm just very picky. So what we'll do is we will add some extra margin 
along the horizontal edges. Okay, so let's uh, navigate back to our code. And instead of multiplying width by 0 0.1, we will multiply it by 0 0.2. And that way we are 20% away from the edge. And we will do the same uh, for our right coordinate. So 0 0.8 instead of 0 0.9. Now this should look good, hopefully. <laughs> yep, now I really, really love it. And now we can actually move on with the fun part, which is drawing the windows. To do this, we will of course use a nested for loop, because nobody has the time to draw each window individually. So we will type for row in range 6 and for column in range 5. Now inside the body of this for loop, we will start building up our window logic slowly, slowly. So we will begin with a single window and we will then expand it to a whole bunch of them. So let's select a region of interest at the very top of our building first. So we will type image, we will open a set of square brackets where we will start drawing our window at the integer instance of height times 0.1. Easy peasy. And we will then finish drawing this window, let's say 60 pixels towards the bottom. So we will type the integer instance of height times 0 0.1 plus 60. Beautiful. Now I have a feeling that this line of code will be <laughs> very long. So let's expand it to a few lines right from the get go. Okay. Now let's add a comma and let's specify the horizontal coordinates. Now, in this case, we would also like to draw this window at int, the integer instance of width times 0 0.2, which is again, the edge of our building. And we would like to finish drawing it mm, about 30 pixels to the right. So the integer instance of width times 0 0.2 plus 30. Beautiful. Now, once we have selected this region of interest, we will then assign it to a color. So I'm going to go for a darker purple than what we have right now. So uh, 28, 23, and 35, whatever, should look good. Let's save it and let's give it a run. Beautiful. There you go. Here's our window. Now let's make sure that it doesn't start at the very edge of the building. Let's add a bit of margin. Okay. So in terms of vertical margins, I'm going to add a margin of 20 pixels and we will do this for both edges. So we will add 20 to both sides of this uh, colon. Hmm. Now, similarly, we will do the same for our horizontal margins. So we will add this time 15 and we will do this across both sides of the colon as well. Now let's save everything and let's have a look. Beautiful. And now we have a bit of margin away from the edge. But margin is not the only thing we need to take care of. We also need to find a way to spread our windows apart, or spread them away from each other, because right now we are just drawing them one above the other. And as you guys may guess, we will use our iteration variables of row and column to achieve this. OK, so in terms of the rows, I would like to draw each of our windows 100 pixels away uh, from each other. So we will type 100 times row. Beautiful. And we will do this once again across both sides of the colon. Now, in terms of the columns, I would like to draw them 75 pixels apart, uh, 75 pixels away from each other. So 75 times column. Beautiful. And let's apply it to the right coordinate as well. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and save everything and let's see if it worked. Ha ha. Look at that. Awesome. Now the only thing left to do is to add a bit of randomness to our image because right now it's slightly boring. So what we'll do is we will randomly select a bunch of windows and we will fill them with light. Let there be light. And the way to do so is to add a conditional statement within the body of our for loop. So let me expand this window. OK, so if np dot random dot rand int as in random integer and we will limit our uh, integers to anything between zero and eight, not including eight. And if this random integer is equal equal to five, then we will create a variable called window color and we will assign it to a very nice yellow. So let's go for 240. Um, 230 and 140. Okay. Now, if the random integer does not equal five, we will then add an else clause where we will set the window color 
to the same dark purple we had earlier, so 28, 23, and 35. Beautiful. And then within the logic of our uh, region of interest, we will simply copy this window color variable, and instead of assigning all the window to the dark purple, we will assign them to window color. Hmm. Cool. Now let's save everything and let's give it a run. And hopefully now our office building art is complete. Ha! Look at that! Amazing! Now the best part about it is whenever each time we will rerun this code, we will get different windows filled with light. And it doesn't matter how many times we will run it, we will produce different images with different locations of lights. Awesome! And now it's time for you to come up with your own NumPy art. And please share it with me if you're not shy. Now, I know that YouTube doesn't really allow us to share photos, but you can always find me on LinkedIn and on Twitter. And in both cases, my name is Maria Sha 888 my username. <laughs> now, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this exercise. And if you did, please share it with everyone or at least some. Now, if you'd like to be extra awesome, you can always leave me a like, you can always leave me a comment, you can subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you guys very soon, so stay tuned!